Two summers ago, on a hot day in Jerusalem, I found myself at one of the most infamous holy sites, the Wailing Wall. The Wailing Wall, also called the Western Wall, holds spiritual and religious significance to those of the Jewish, Muslim, and Christian faith, as well as many more from other traditions, interests, and faiths. And on this day, the Wailing Wall was surrounded by people of all kinds, tourists, natives, pilgrims, and seekers of all sorts found themselves, just like me, huddled around the presence of the sacred. Looking around at the interested tourists, or the praying pilgrims, or the careful rituals, and of course the vast historical significance of the place, I felt at a loss. What do I do now that I'm here? But the bigger question became not what, but why. Why am I here? Why are so many people here? Why is this place sacred? This wall, this seemingly inanimate object, it had become fully animated through the life that millions of people had put into it. Through song and prayer and dance, through ritual and intention, this wall made of brick and stone had become sacred. So there in front of the Western Wall, with no formal ritual or prayer, I wrote on a tiny slip of paper, love, love for myself and love for others. I folded it up and placed it neatly in a little crevice. My highest intention given to the sacred. What is prayer if not an intention? Prayer can be difficult for those of us who identify as spiritually or religiously progressive. There's a certain rejection of the almighty, typically male, typically white God in the sky, granting or denying requests and wishes from us humans on the ground, casually deciding whether our pleading will be heard, acknowledged, or even dealt with. But how does prayer transform when we approach it as an intention that we are sending to the divine or the sacred, rather than a request? We see prayer as intention practiced worldwide, whether through prayer flags or pagan rituals or meditations or the Muslim Salah or perhaps in the many forms of prayer, solitary, group, Song, silent, magic. We witness the power and vulnerability of the human spirit released to the divine through our intentions. That's the real magic of prayer. Not whether a request is denied or granted, but that what we pour from our hearts into the universe or that which we hold sacred when it becomes real, becomes animate. Just as the wind sanctifies the sutras on the Buddhist prayer flags, infusing the sutra into the universe. Just like the wind and the sutra, we infuse life into our intentions. But just as it is not enough to only pray, Intentions alone cannot erase impact. Example, if prayer requires faith, then intentions require strength. Strength to live into our intention. If mine is to love myself and therefore others, then I must present the strength in which to do so. And each day that I am loving myself, I'm breathing life into the intention that I released into the world. 
So how in our time and in our many corners of the earth, as we face tragedies and pain and suffering, how can we honor the sacred and the divine through our own power and strength? How can we shift from words, wishes, or requests to the full presence and intention of body, heart, and mind? In what areas of our life do we find yearning? In what areas of our beings do we find the need for release? What intentions can we put into the universe? And then how can we live in to those intentions? How do we accept the fullness of who we are and make ourselves vulnerable enough to share that with the universe? May we live into our fullest selves, into our highest intentions. When it's difficult, when it's not, no matter how we pray or who we pray to, may we live into that with the fullness of heart, mind, and soul. May it be so. Ashe.